After his big money move from Germany to England, Kai Havertz has had a mixed run of form. But the question is, how good can Kai Havertz be? How good can he become? What are his weaknesses? What are his abilities? This is the profile of Kai Havertz. Dan, welcome to Chelsea Perspective. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity for being here. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thank you very much for finding the time to present Kai Havertz's uh, player profile with me. I think it's something the fans will enjoy or whoever that gets the opportunity to watch this video. So um, let's get into business, uh, uh, Dan. Uh, please. If you don't mind, can you take some time to give us a brief overview, or let me say, of his history, the clubs he's played for, and how he got to England, and Absolutely. Chelsea to be precise. Absolutely, I'd be happy to. So Kai Havertz was born uh, on June the 11th, 1999, in Aachen, Germany. I apologize for the pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> to a middle-class family, he had a good upbringing uh, in a very stable home. Uh, and that meant he's not been overly interested in money or anything other than, like, other than that. He's always never really wanted for anything. Um, he began his youth career playing for Alemannia Maria Dorf as a four-year-old in his local town of Aachen before joining Alemannia Aachen as a 10-year-old. And he was quickly spotted by uh, the club in Germany that he's known for, by Leverkusen, as an 11-year-old. Uh, in June 2010. Uh, he made his Bundesliga debut at, at 17 for Leverkusen and he scored his first goal at home to Wolfsburg with a curling left-footed volley uh, which suggested his immense ability. So that is the club that Kai Havertz originates from in Germany uh, at Leverkusen. So Havertz made over 100 appearances for Leverkusen in Germany and he set records for being the youngest player to both 50 and 100 league appearances and also was the highest scoring teenager in the league's history. Uh, some un something unknown about uh, Kai Havertz is why he chose the number 29 as well. Um, this is his favorite number because he always used to play the video game FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer with his brother. Uh, he often, Kai often took the number 10 with gold shoes, but his brother always chose the number 29. So when offered the number 29 when he was first breaking into the first team for Leverkusen, he chose the number 29 as it was the one uh, that was available to him and he remembered it from his brother. So after many impressive performances for Leverkusen over a number of years in the Bundesliga, there were many clubs interested in Kai's services uh, in the summer of 2020. But Chelsea having the uh, windfall of not having spent money in a transfer market in 2019, they had the opportunity to sign Kai for £72 million pounds in August 2020. Um, there was much interest around Europe from clubs like Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, who all saw Kai's immense abilities and their, his capacity to slot into their midfield. Uh, and but Chelsea through a very clever uh, transfer policy and planning by the, the powers that be at the club were able to uh, snatch Kai from uh, Leverkusen. That yeah, is, uh, that is Kai's backstory. Yeah, what a great story it is. So he started playing at the age of four. No, uh, that bring back uh, no wonder. He's as good as he is. Uh, uh, he's one of my favorite players when he's, I mean, on his day, he's so good to watch the way he glides through the midfield or if you give him freedom, he's so, so good to watch. And thank you very much for taking some time to research his history because I do it, that's not easy. It's a very snappy, but well, well very, very uh, rich uh, history of Kai Hava. Thank you again, Dan. I appreciate sure. you finding time to research it. 
Now, moving on, uh, uh, let's talk about his abilities. What makes Kai Kai? What makes Kai the Kai will all urge the Chelsea board to go get and they eventually got him for us. What are his abilities overall? What type of a player is he? Well, Kai is a very interesting player and there's actually a word that uh, German the German pundits and uh, the wider German football community refer to Kai, a player like Kai as and uh, please forgive me for my pronunciation, but he is what they call an Aliskun, which is like a player who can do everything. And they liken him a bit to uh, a player like Mesut Ozil and Michael Ballack, who are famous, obviously, German players, in the sense that Kai is uh, the one attacking player who has the capacity to do basically everything in attack. He can uh, play in anywhere across attacking midfield. He can play as a, as a number nine. He can play as a right wing plays a left wing he's got the positional and uh, tactical awareness to be able to apply his abilities across any of the attacking areas he is also adept at playing deeper in midfield as a maybe an, an eight or a box-to-box -box player but uh, his unique technical ability allows him to play in a number of areas yeah. so his most significant attributes um, are like you said his balance his ball control and his technical ability with respect to passing and finishing. And one of the most uh, significant aspects of Kai is the, his ability to glide with the ball. And he has this kind of languid, uh, or it almost looks lazy, but it's not lazy, the style where he just floats with the ball and he can uh, maneuver past players with his terrific balance and uh, dribbling ability. Yeah, again, great, great, great response to that question. And what that reminds me, one of the, one of the things that I like so much about him is this awareness, his awareness of the spaces around him. Because at Chelsea, you could argue he's one of, that is the, he reads spaces so much that no other player uh, in the team can measure him in that aspect. And that's great to see. And usually before you get to know, he's eaten up the space and he's, done some damage before you be able to find out that Kai is there and that's one of the things I love the most about him. So thank you again Dan for taking some time to present his abilities uh, to the fans and whoever gets to watch this video. Now it's only natural to move from his abilities to his weaknesses. I know you like him. Uh, putting aside how much you like him what would you say are Kai Havertz's uh, weaknesses? Uh, well, as I said, the beauty of Kai is in his, in his ability to uh, glide with the ball. And he has this kind of lazy style. But that often draws a lot of criticism because people have this perception that because he looks like he's not running fast or he's not applying himself with his full energy, that he is somehow uh, lazy. So I would say his weakness is that perhaps there's this perception that he isn't working as hard necessarily as he should be. And one other thing as well is that Kai often does have a tendency to drift in and out of game sometimes. With, mm. depending, depending on the pace of the game, he seems to have a little, a little phase where he doesn't lose interest, but the game sort of passes him by a little bit and he's not able to impact it as much as he probably, his talent probably should. Um, another thing is that um, he's better able to deal with the physical uh, demands of the Premier League at the moment. But uh, for someone who's of uh, Kai's height at 1.89 meters, um, he should really be a little bit better at heading the ball. He's good at Chelsea's front post, but uh, he could perhaps contribute more in a goal scoring sense with his head because of his height. Um, and though his versatility, uh, Kai is very, very versatile. As I said, he can play across many areas in the front line. Though his versatility is a key strength, it can be thought of as a weakness, especially so far as at Chelsea, because he doesn't really have a nailed on position. So though he can play in many positions, he doesn't have one significant position so far at Chelsea where he excels over and above any of the other players. So because he is often so good, he can play in so different, so many different positions, but he is not clearly, uh, let's say, a number nine or a right wing or a number eight. He is all of those things. Uh, one more thing is that uh, Kai's 
so far in the Premier League uh, hasn't unfortunately shown enough in, in terms of goals and assists, which is often something that is leveled at him uh, in that his talent suggests that he should be making double figures for goals and assists, uh, but he hasn't quite reached that in the Premier League yet. Yeah, I, I, I agree you could classify his lack of um, you know, good numbers in terms of assists and goals as a weakness also. There's something that I, I, I mean, for me, the most pronounced of his weaknesses, you could say, is this, you could say he's, he's never been consistent enough. Even at Leverkusen, he's, you could argue he's, he wasn't that consistent. He often comes to life towards you because uh end of the season or mid-season and, and you know i we you, you we know how impatient chelsea fans can be but you you right now they him they may over be overlooking it due to his uh goal that won us the champions league because uh, that's define if you define chelsea fans for me that's how they operate that goal uh, that lone goal that won us the champions league will work you could say will carry Kai for a long time, but at the time, if he doesn't start to deliver, they would turn against him. And I hope he doesn't come to that because he's such a good player and he's such a talent that, uh, like Tuku have said, he is what he can achieve as a player is limitless. It's up to him to like go for it and, and achieve it. So thank you very much again, Dan. Uh, now let's move to something. Uh, um, Let's move to, that is from his weaknesses. You've mentioned some of his weaknesses and some of which you could argue he's, you know, improved a bit on those aspects. So the question is, has Kai Havertz, has he, has he improved? If you say yes, Dan, how, how has he improved? Well, he has improved in, certainly in a, from a physical standpoint. I mean, in his first season at Chelsea, he did suffer from uh, coming back or coming into the team late, um, owing to the later start of the, the season. And he did get uh, COVID through the season, which severely impacted his uh, ability to recover and to uh, remain relevant throughout the, the 90 minutes. But uh, from a physical standpoint, he seems to have adapted well to the pace of the Premier League. His passing is a lot quicker and sharper, and he's able, certainly in, the, in a game like the semi-final, uh, against Real Madrid in the Champions League last season. He was very significant in uh, physically imposing himself on Real Madrid's centre-backs like Sergio Ramos and Rafael Varane. And he was a key component of actually winning that game um, in the second leg. So from a physical standpoint, he certainly asserted himself more in the last year or so. <clears throat> and uh, he's grown also in the finer, more tactical aspects of his game. His pressing is more intent uh, was more full of intent. Um, he's cut mistakes out of his game now, uh, certainly in the defensive half. Um, I, re I recall a mistake he made in a home game, a home draw to Southampton, where he dribbled in his own half. They lost the, uh, Chelsea lost the ball and Southampton scored. Um, he has received the ball this season in similar positions, and it's notable how he lays the ball off to somebody like Jorginho a lot faster. So he's aware now of the need to be more uh, positionally away and uh, sort of quicken his game uh, in the Premier League. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yes, uh, there's still a way for him to go to develop and to deliver certainly in the final third, but there are aspects of his game, uh, certainly off the ball that have developed significantly in the last 12 months. Yeah, I've got to say that has, uh, you've made some great observations in terms of how he's, he's improved. I think uh, in terms of adapting to the physical demands of the Premier League, I think he's he's done some work, and, and that's there for for us to see whenever he plays. The physical aspect of his game aren't that his weakness that much anymore, and he's like you said, he's learned to release the ball quicker, and he's learned he's learned that the Premier League you don't have, or uh, in the Premier League you don't have so much time you don't to dwell on the ball. You have to release it quickly or hold on to it and guide it properly so you don't lose it. And thank you very much uh, for, for making those points that those are great, great, great uh, aspect of his game that he's improved and that would take him a long way in the Premier League and even in the Champions League. But that's by the way. Now, Dan, um, 
how about his current form? Uh, how well has he played of late? I mean, in the games that he's played, could you please talk about his current form? Of course, um, Kai so far this season has made 12 appearances at club level for Chelsea. He has two goals and one assist. Um, unfortunately, in the previous game against Norwich, where it was a 7-0 victory, Kai was actually the only attacker who didn't return um, in terms of a goal or assist. So his form is not terrible, but it's perhaps not where it should be, uh, given the level of his talent. And he's rather, I would say, suffering in, in inverted commas from the fact that there's so much quality in the Chelsea attack. And Chelsea have just signed a world-class forward in Romelu Lukaku. So Kai's uh, consistent game time is now uh, heavily impacted. And he's having to rotate in and, uh, in and around a number of positions in the attack, be it on the right flank or in uh, the number nine spot. So his form at the moment, uh, from an honest perspective, is not uh, great. It's not terrible because there are certain things that he's doing right, especially against Norwich. He opened a lot of space for the other attackers to uh, score and assist and lay on other key passes. But uh, in terms of the final third, he isn't delivering uh, in that context, unfortunately. So his form, as I said, it's not, uh, he's not in peak form, but he's also not playing perhaps as badly as many say. Yeah, I, I, I am really surprised at how far his, I mean, his, his, his form has dropped because you could argue he started the season very well. So, but I don't know what's going on. But that's by the way, Dan, you said something about his versatility, how that has led to him not, not being able to nail down a position in the team. That brings to mind how versatility, yes, can you know, ensure that a player always has a, has a place in the team, also can affect, can be detrimental to a player's development. Most especially a player who's at the age bracket of Kai Havertz, but the, the issue is when you're able to play in every position, the manager will always come to you to go fill in a space where his is his, his short of personnel. Don't you think that that in a way will affect Kai Havertz's development as a player, his versatility? I think yes, uh, in a sense it can. Uh, but as I said, going back to what he's referred to as an Alice corner, he's a bit of everything. So if you look at a player like Thomas Muller, who's He's a wrong goiter, which is a little bit different, like a withdrawn number 10. But Thomas Muller is someone who can also do everything. And he's managed to sustain a career of being played in various positions because he is such a high quality footballer. So for Kai, I would say perhaps he needs to nail down uh, a position, perhaps uh, as an attacking partner for someone like Romelu Lukaku in a, a front two. Um, I certainly think that's probably where Kai would be best maybe playing off Romelu as a second striker, um, similar to maybe Dennis Bergkamp and Thierry Henry. Um, so those comparisons are very, very lofty. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think from a versatility standpoint, it's always good for him to be able to play, at least in some position. But I think to see the best of Kai, we need to really have him play in one position where his, his characteristics are um, capitalized on and he has a, a clear set of instructions from which to work upon every single game such that like you say his development is accentuated rather than impacted yeah great great response to that question he needs to be you know how do i phrase it he needs he needs to be focused on this on, on a particular position maybe as a pairing with a with an out and out striker like romelu lukaku so we can we can see the best of Kai Havertz because playing him, he's played all I think on the flanks on the uh, Lampard. He's played as number eight on the Thomas Tuchel. I think at one point he played as number ten uh, on the Frank Lampard, and, and that's not okay for the player who's just. I think he's still twenty one, right? He's twenty two. He's twenty two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that yeah. exactly. So that can be detrimental to that player's development that at this age in, in his career but but that's by the way we've talked about his his weaknesses how good he is uh, and how he's improved and his versatility now dan how good do you think kai havertz can become given that he's he's technically good he's good on the ball is arguably one of the most technically gifted in the current chelsea team it's such a fine finisher and that's something most people don't look at. He doesn't go for power. 
he often goes for finets. He, his shots are very well calculated, not of a power. And whenever he gets it right, you, 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 when you look at it, you go, wow, this guy is such a fine finisher. So how good do you think Kai Havertz can become? Well, if you take, there are various visual clues and certain things that you can take from the way that he plays. But if you look reputationally around, uh, just the clubs that wanted him when he was available at uh, Leverkusen, Real Madrid were interested in him, Bayern Munich were interested in him, and very, very interested. You know, Chelsea were opportunist in getting him. Um, so from that standpoint, he can be as good as he wants to be. And every person that uh, has worked with him, he had a youth coach, his name I think is Tayford Corkett, who gave him his debut in the Leverkusen team. And he often praised Kai's temperament and mentality in the sense that he he's not phased by anything. Um, and everybody who speaks about Kai says that he can be as good as he wants to be and he can be among the best in the world. And many have touted him as a potential Ballon d'Or winner one day. He has a long way to go before uh, he reaches that, but his talent and ability certainly lends itself to, to that. And when I watch him, and this is very, very high praise, and I always dislike giving comparisons to players, but Joe Cole mentioned recently that he's very similar to Ido Johnson but his potential suggests that he could even be a lot better. And I think as well of when I watched Arsenal teams like Dennis Bergkamp, there, there are aspects of Kai's game, certainly technically, that remind me of Bergkamp. Bergkamp was an outstanding footballer and the way he manipulated the ball. And Kai can do that as well. But there's also certain details about Kai, like you mentioned. When he finishes, if you notice, or if you watch old clips of him at Leverkusen and even certainly his goal in the Champions League, Kai has this innate ability to wait until the very last second before placing the ball in the goal. And that's an eye of a truly exceptional footballer. And he almost, it's, all, it's almost to the point where it could be uh, a, a catastrophe because the goalkeeper would save the ball. But he manages every time that I've seen him to time it such that the ball goes into the net, even with a deflection. So he has all the indications, if you watch him, of the, a truly exceptional player. And uh, I believe that he's one that could certainly be uh, among the best in the world. He just needs consistent game time and uh, a little bit of extra belief. Yeah, I, I have to argue, I, I agree with you. I mean, he's well equipped technically and otherwise to become one of the best in the world or someday even win the Ballon d'Or. But he has to work for it. He has to reach for it. And uh, hopefully he doesn't, his case doesn't become, uh, you know, a replica of that of Eden Hazard has got everything to become one of the best in the world, but in the end hasn't achieved that hasn't achieved that due to lack of uh, his you know his inability to let me say to reach for it or you could argue he doesn't work as hard as he should. I uh, mean so but that's by the way Dan now moving on um Usually there's always an argument that uh, certain players are better suited for certain formation or you could say are system players. Uh, or coming to Kai Havertz, do you think he's a system player or do you think he's, let me just put it this way, he's well suited for a certain formation? I don't think he's a system player at all. I think he's a type of player who can play in any kind of system. Um, given his versatility and his, his sheer, the sheer magnitude of his skill set, he can play in a number of different uh, systems. I think ideally, if you watch him for Germany, he plays either as a, a number, a roving number nine. There's this misconception that he's a false nine and he drops deep all the time, but he doesn't. He does like to go beyond as well. Um, but uh, managers like uh, Joachim, Joachim Löw and Hansi Flick have shown that Kai can play in a three at the back system. He played fairly well in a four at the back system with uh, Frank Lampard. Um, because he's so positionally and tactically intelligent, he has a number of different aspects to his game that allow him to play in different systems. So I don't think he's a, a system player at all. And given the fact that he's played in so many different positions and done well and scored goals and laid on assists and contributed both tactically, tactically and technically to uh, his teams and the way that they work, I think he can play in a number of different positions and different systems. I do agree with you that Kai is not a system player, but let's just, uh, before we move on, Dan, I'd like us to address this. Can you be specific with me? 
we, we've established the versatility while it may help a player to always have a place in the team can be detrimental to a player's development. And Kai is just 22. Dan, don't you think that his versatility, like you've mentioned again, we're just going back to it, to, that is to address it. Don't you think his versatility will affect his development and could also lead to him not hitting the form that we believe, not reaching you know, the measure that we believe he could reach? I think it could, but as I said, I, I use Thomas Muller as an example. Now, Thomas Muller has had a stellar career and he's played in many different positions. He's played a, as a number nine, as a wing, as a number 10, as you know, all kinds of different systems. Okay, he was surrounded by world-class players and Chelsea have a similar um, system of, or a similar sort of catalog of world-class players around them as well. But the, the one key thing that I noticed with Muller that's different with Kai is that he's, he's managed to not only prove himself to different managers, but he's played in different systems under different managers in different positions because he's had belief in it yes he has he's always had this world-class potential and now obviously clearly world-class ability but that's what kai needs yes his versatility can be harmful if he's playing in too many different positions but i think what what should override that is a belief in kai to play often with a set of instructions to use his ability all the time so rather than um, constantly having him in and out of the team um, and mixing and matching different formations and systems. The consistency that he needs in his game is to play, be playing all the time with the same set of instructions, no matter if he's playing number nine or right wing or a number 10. I hope that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah it, does, it does make sense. I just wanted this to address it again because we've talked about it, but when you were uh, responding to the question whether he's a system player or not, you did mention his versatility. So I just wanted us to cloud, to uh, you know, address it and uh, you know, get get it over with. So now moving on, um, Dan, how would you explain to an average Chelsea fan? what Kai Havertz brings to the table, because I can assure you, if you ask a few, it is difficult to understand. They, they, it will, you will get some answers that you go, wow. So these guys, these people don't even know Kai Havertz very well. So how would you explain to, to an average Chelsea fan what, what Kai Havertz brings to the table? Because the truth is, the way he plays, it will take somebody that understands football very well to come out and say, okay, this is what this guy brings to the table. These are the, that is his attributes that complements all the attributes of other players in the team. So how would you explain to an average Chelsea fan what Kai Havertz brings to the table? I think Kai brings tremendous uh, technical ability and uh, a lot of, a lot of attacking ability. You know, Kai can, he can press, he can pass, he can dribble, he can head the ball. He can run beyond, he can drop deep and link the play, he can go wide and <clears throat> he really can, in an attacking sense, do everything that you need to be done. Okay. He's had many different faces in many different games for Chelsea and uh, in an attacking sense, he's probably the one player in amongst all of Chelsea's attackers, maybe alongside Mason Mount, who can take a set of instructions from a manager and implement them in whatever position that he is placed in. So, as I said, given his, uh, I believe, world-class potential, um, his near unparalleled uh, finishing ability and technical ability mean that he brings a really terrifically classy uh, touch to Chelsea's play. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you. His, the way he plays is pivotal to the way we play. Uh, because um, what was the game that Lukaku and uh, Werner got injured? When he came on, our attack became more fluid. Although some would argue otherwise, but to me, I, I, I'd say yes. When he came on, he changed the dynamics of our attack. We played even better. There were, the link up play was smoother, and we were able to like utilize uh, even pockets of spaces you know here and there so that's good to see and thank you very much for taking some time to explain that to 
uh, to the fans there or whoever who, that gets to watch this video. Now, moving on to something, uh, to the next uh, question now, Dan, uh, how important do you think, uh, do you believe uh, Kai Havertz will be for the team going into the current season? I think Kai will be very important because, like you said, uh, in games where uh, Romelu Lukaku is perhaps not playing, um, if he's injured for any period, or if Tuchel comes up with a system where he needs a player who can drift in between the lines, who can link the play, who can beat people, who can pull a defense apart, who can do many things just from one player, who can probably do two or three players' jobs in an attacking sense. Just and he, he's himself. a good creator too. He creates he chances. He is a very good creator. And as you mentioned rightfully, it's not a coincidence that Chelsea's attack looked more fluid um, when he came on against Malmo and when he came, came on against Norwich. I think also it's uh, a little bit unfair given the quality of the opposition. I don't like to put either Malmo or Norwich down. But I think that also didn't really show um, in a fair sense Kai's ability simply to make Chelsea better in an attack because he's like a perfect hybrid of, of a striker and a, a progressive attacking midfielder in the sense that he understands space. You know, he can manipulate space, he can move into space, he can pull defenders all different ways. So Kai brings a really tremendous an attacking array of skills to Chelsea. And I think he will be very crucial going into the season for allowing Chelsea to do different things in an attack. You know, Romelu Lukaku is a world-class player, but he does allow Chelsea to do only a certain number of things. Whereas Kai, um, when he plays by himself up front or on the right, uh, as an attacking inside forward. Um, he allows Chelsea to be more fluid and do many, many different things in an attacking and tactical sense. Uh, yeah, I gotta say that's a great, great response to that question. I think his importance already, uh, we could see when La Lukaku got injured, he's able to play in the, although I still, that still brings me back to how I don't like that vers the versatility tag being placed on such a young player. Uh, I, you know, uh, he can play as number nine, he can play as number eight, number 10 on the flanks. So that highlights how important he will be for the team going into the season. They already were seeing his importance in the absence of Lukaku. He was able to replace him and even do an even, uh, if you ask me, I'd say in that game, he did an even better job than Lukaku did when he was on the pitch because he changed the dynamics of the game the moment he came out. Now, that's by the way, Dan. Let's move on to his future. Before Chelsea secured his signature, there were arguments in the chains within the Chelsea fan base that he, oh, he's just using Chelsea as a stepping stone in, uh, in, in, within in two, three years that he may leave for Real Madrid, which they, uh, um, the rumor then was his sports choice and uh, some say it was uh, that he's will leave Chelsea for uh, Bayern Munich what do you think do you think he has a future at Chelsea absolutely when he joined Chelsea I believe he signed a he signed a five-year contract and such contracts are often as much to protect the club's investment as it is for the player to stick around for a long time but uh, I firmly believe that Kai is a player that the club are truly invested in uh, both from a financial uh, and a footballing sense. Uh, Kai is the, one of the players who is the future of Chelsea alongside a player like Mason Mount or Rhys James or Trevor Chalaba or Callum hudson Adoy, anybody like that. Kai is as much a part of uh, Chelsea's future as any of those players. And simply by the fact that Chelsea have placed such an investment in him, I believe that he has a very long-term future at Chelsea. And um, it's very rare that Chelsea sell a player of such high potential as well. They, shown with Eden Hazard as well, that they sold him at a point where they had gotten the most out of him and he'd done everything that he needed to at Chelsea. So I certainly believe from that standpoint that Chelsea are going to dig their heels in with respect to uh, Kai. But just from a, a footballing sense, I think Kai as well has a lot of evolution left. And I think he, he chose at a very young age to come to the Premier League. Um, so from a positive standpoint, if he had wanted to go to Real Madrid, he could have stayed at Leverkusen for an extra year 
and opted not to go to Chelsea, but he made the positive step to test himself to go to the Premier League and uh, to progress his career. So from a positive standpoint, I think that that is certainly a check in the box for Kai and Chelsea's future. But everybody who talks about Kai, uh, former footballers, uh, people in the German media and uh, fans who talk about him often highlight his uh, immense ability. So I think Chelsea have certainly signed someone with world-class potential and someone who will be very much a key figure in Chelsea uh, sides for years to come. I never believed the rumours and I, my argument then was if Chelsea to him is a stepping stone, then it's a very, very hard stone for him to step on. But again, I like what you said. Uh, his decision to come and try out his abilities in the uh, Premier League is a great one because it will do his career a world of good. And Dan, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure discussing Kai Havertz's profile with you. Your responses showed you did a great deal of research, you know, and, and also you did you do know him very well and, and I appreciate you finding time to do a little more research to prepare for this uh, the presentation of Kai Havertz's uh, profile. So Dan, please take some time, tell the viewers or whoever that gets the, t uh, the chance to watch this video, who you are, how they can reach you, because uh, I, I honestly do love discussing or debating football with you because you your knowledge of the game is amazing. Well, firstly, Coach, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity of having me on. I'm actually wearing my Kai Havertz shirt, so it's an honor to talk about him. And he is uh, actually my favorite player so at Chelsea, so it's easy to talk about him. But uh, yeah, my name is Dan, Dan Hill. Um, I'm a writer for the Chelsea Social. Uh, I also have a little podcast that I've started with my friends. It's called the H, another football podcast where we talk about the Premier League. And uh, yeah, I've been a member of the Chelsea uh, online community for almost two years now. And uh, I really enjoy putting across my, I love writing, so I put, it, put it across my thoughts in a written format. So if you do want to check me out, please check me out at my uh, Twitter handle or at the Chelsea Social. Um, you can find me there. And yeah, you've had the man. I have his Twitter handle on the screen and I will make sure to provide his complete information when I upload the video and You've heard him talk about Kai Harvard. You must have seen him on, on other channels to know that he knows his stuff and it's always good to listen to him talk football. And uh, people, that is the player profile of Kai Harvard. So get in the comment section and let us know if we missed anything. Again, my name is Kuchila and Dan is here. Thank you so much again, Dan, for finding the time to present Kai Harvard profile to the fans thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure my friend thank you so much really appreciate it thank you